Hello everyone! Welcome or welcome back to my channel. This video is part one of a four part trying to conceive series that I'm going to be giving you guys. And I thought what better way to start it off than to do exactly what I'm trying to do right now, which is preparing to try to conceive. What I mean for preparing to try to conceive is what I do or what I recommend you do before you actually start the trying to conceive. I'm gonna give you a series of tips of things that me and my husband did and that worked perfect for us before we started trying to conceive baby number one. Now we're gonna start trying to conceive baby number two and not all of these tips apply to us, but most of them do. Let's get on to it. The very first thing I recommend is to talk to your partner. You guys have to know what page you are both on. Do you want to try to conceive now? Do you want to try to conceive in six months? Are you looking to try to conceive next year? Do you guys want one child, two kids, three kids, five kids, 10 kids? You have to talk about these things and about serious topics. There are many things that couples don't think about when they start trying to have a child, but they are things that have to be talked about. For example, parenting styles. Do you want to take a kind, gentle, disciplining style or do you want to be authoritative, harsh, disciplining, disciplining style? Are you comfortable with things like crying it out, spanking your children, punishing them, giving them timeouts? These are serious things that people are very across the board divided on and you have to know if you and your partner are in the same page about these things when it comes to your child. You also want to know what your plans are for their future in regards to what emphasis are you going to put in education or how much emphasis you're going to put into their education. Whether you want them to do sports, whether you want to allow them to not do anything if they don't want to do anything. So there are many things that you have to take into consideration when it comes to raising a child and you have to talk to your partner about what their views on these things are. Who knows, maybe these are things that you've already spoken about, but it's good to have a refresher conversation and see where you both stand on these subjects. The second thing that I would recommend is to go to a preconception appointment with your ob -GYN. Every single doctor does everything differently. From preconception appointments to prenatal appointments to ultrasounds to blood work to postpartum care, every single doctor has a different method of how they like taking care of their patients. However, the most common things that will happen in a preconception appointment are your doctor will take your menstrual history. They want to know if you have a regular period. They want to know if you have things like PCOS, hypothyroidism, hyperthyroidism, anything that can affect your ability to reproduce. They want to know what your reproductive history is. Do you have children? How many? Have you ever been pregnant? What was the outcome? Did you have a miscarriage? You will most likely get a pap smear if you're due or close to due. Some doctors do blood work just so they can check things like your thyroid levels, see how healthy you are. Then your doctor will also recommend taking a prenatal vitamin. They might give you samples. They might give you a variety of samples. They might just tell you, I'd recommend this one, buy it over the counter. Basically your preconception appointment, the doctor is trying to get your overall picture of health. They're gonna check your weight. They're gonna check your height. They're gonna see your BMI. They're gonna recommend whether you need to gain weight, whether you need to lose weight, whether you need to maintain weight. It is recommended to be healthy during pregnancy anyway, but those are all the things that are going to go on in your preconception appointment. The third thing I recommend is to get healthy. Now, what do I mean by get healthy? I don't mean go out and do the Chloe Ting 28 day challenge to lose I don't know how many pounds and be skinny. No. What I mean by get healthy is start working out three to five times a week, whether it's walking, running, riding a bike, jumping rope, whatever it is, start working out three to five times a week. Two, eat healthier. And by eat healthier, I don't mean go on a strict no carb, no sugar, no soda, no anything good in life diet. I mean, start making conscious choices, eat more veggies, eat more fruit. You can still indulge every once in a while. It's not like you're going to become the Hitler of the kitchen and only have extremely healthy leafy green vegetables with no sugar and no salt and no pepper. No, just make more conscious choices to eat healthier. Maybe look at what you can and can't have while you're pregnant. That way you start getting used to those things. Another thing you can do, speaking of can and can't have, when you're pregnant, you should 
shouldn't be drinking caffeine, alcohol, or smoking. So it would be a great idea if you do any of those things to start weaning off of them. Basically, act like you're pregnant. That way, when you do get pregnant, it isn't such a shock to your body that you just completely stop doing these things. Number four, I would recommend to get a period tracker. My favorite app is Ovia. I'm not gonna go into detail on this app because the third video in this series about pinpointing your ovulation, I'm going to go into detail on all of the features in Ovia. However, Ovia is an app that helps you track your fertile window and your ovulation day. You want to have a good idea of the days that you are most fertile. That way, those are the days that you are actually baby dancing and you increase your chances of getting pregnant. The final thing I would recommend is to check out what your insurance and your maternity or paternity leave situation is at work. What do I mean by this? Let's start with insurance. There are many things that you have to take into consideration when you're thinking of your insurance. You have to check what your deductibles are, what your out of pocket will be. You have to see how much of your prenatal appointments your insurance covers. Do they cover ultrasounds? How much of your labor and delivery they will cover? Do they cover C-sections? How much will it be to add your child to your insurance once your child is born? There are many things that come with insurance and pregnancy and post-pregnancy that I would recommend that you definitely check out. Now with your job, you want to see what their policies are on leave. Do you have to be at that job for a certain amount of time? For example, the job I had required you to be working there for a whole year before you were even allowed to request a maternity leave. You want to see how much paid time you're going to get off and how much unpaid time you're going to get off, how much time you're willing to spend with your child. And furthermore, if you only have a limited amount of time, you also have to look into daycares, see how much those costs are. There are a lot of daycares that have waiting periods that you pretty much have to sign up for before you even get pregnant. You want to check what the paternity leave situation is with your husband or your partner. Do they get paternity or maternity leave? How long do they get? Is it paid? Is it unpaid? That way you have the ability to budget and to plan your time accordingly before you even get pregnant. That is it for today's video. I hope that these tips were helpful for you guys. Please leave a comment down below letting me know one thing that you do to prepare your body for trying to conceive. That way you can help me or any other mama that just like me is preparing their body to start trying to conceive in the next couple of months. If you like this video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. Go ahead and subscribe and turn on the post notifications so that you get notified when the next three videos of this series come out. It will mean the world to me. Thank you so much for supporting me by watching this video. Again, if you liked it, support me even further by giving it a thumbs up. I hope you have a wonderful day and good luck preparing your body for trying to conceive. Bye, mamas.